Hey guys, it's Jesko from AcousticsInsider.com. I wanted to talk to you about parallel walls versus angled walls. The reason being that it often gets mentioned that if you're building a new room, you should angle your walls to get rid of room modes. And this is actually complete BS because room modes can happen over several reflecting surfaces. So it doesn't need just the two opposite each other. You can have very much more complicated patterns of room modes in your room. And they actually, in fact, they happen even in a rectangular room. Um, it's just that we focus on the main axial modes. So the ones happening directly between two walls because they tend to be the strongest and they're actually the easiest to, to, to test and to treat. The thing is, if you angle your walls, you'll still have room modes. It's just that they'll shift in frequency and it'll actually make the, the patterns or checking them or, or treating them much more difficult, but you will have to treat them. So considering all the other factors involved, considering how much more difficult it is to plan and build a room with angled walls, I tend to be very much in the camp that says, just keep it simple, stupid, because it'll be much easier to plan and uh, work with. So you might ask, what about flutter echoes? Well, the thing is, flutter echoes don't tend to be much of a problem in reality. One of the reasons it gets mentioned so often, or people talk about flutter echoes or say that they have a big flutter echo problem, is that they're testing for flutter echoes by clapping their hands right next to their head. So the thing is, of course, you'll excite that flutter echo maximally if you're clapping right next to your ear. But in reality, you're not going to have a speaker positioned right next to your ear. In fact, it's going to be in front of you. It's going to be at least a meter away. And the, the sound has to bounce off a wall at an angle to get to your ear. So the pattern that creates a flutter echo is not the same as if you clap your hands next to your ear. And what happens is that the flutter echo doesn't tend to be so strongly pronounced. Um, so a much better test, and in fact, I recommend this the next time you want to check for flutter echo in your room, is to get a friend in and have them clap their hands next to the speaker while you sit in the sweet spot. And that way you'll get a much better idea of what the flutter echo actually sounds like um, as it would happen if you played music through your speakers. So I hope that answers your question. Make sure to come and find me on AcousticsInsider.com. Subscribe to my channel and see you next time.